Okay, physics notes, uh, unit uh, section 2.8, slope and one-dimensional kinematics graphing. Quick review of slope, something you did in algebra class, I hope. So slope is, you probably remember, the definition of slope is rise over run. Rise over run. That should sound familiar. So that's your basic definition. Now symbolically, slope would be delta y, that's the rise, the vertical direction, over delta x. So that's another way to say it. And we will use the letter M for slope eventually here. Uh, one more thing though, this is how you see it a lot of times in the algebra book. Since delta y, any, any delta, just like we've learned in the past few units, delta y is y final minus y initial. The way they do it in the math books, so they'll, they'll just say y sub 2 minus y sub 1, where y sub 2 is the y final and y sub 1 is the y initial, over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. All right, so that's that last circle here that I'm doing now, circling now, is what we'll use in this particular graph here. You have then your basic equation of a line in, in slope-intercept form. You have y equals mx plus b. Sorry, a lot of circles here. So M is, stands for slope, B is the y-intercept. In the particular case we have right here, I'll do this backwards, the y-intercept is about 1.0. There's no units here, but the, the slope, uh, the intercept there is about 1.0. I'll plug that in here in a few minutes into my y equals mx plus B. But I want to do a, cal a slope calculation. Let's go to, uh, if you're doing this by hand, it, it, uh, it's a good practice to review this. If I take a couple of points on a line that are far apart, and if you're doing this by hand, this is the way you want to do it. Pick a couple of points that are far apart. Uh, I'll pick, say, this point right here. This is up to the left. That's not a very good point. Let me, uh, I'm going to erase that. Let me use a different color. Try blue again. <clears throat> Excuse me. Blue. All right, so I'm going to go back to negative four up here, right there. Okay. And then I'll go to, say, uh, 4.5 and down to here, because you don't have to pick. These aren't the best points to pick, I guess, but, okay. Um, one thing to note is you want to pick a, a couple points that are far apart. And I'm going to try to draw a straight line here. But bottom line is, actually, I have roughly, if I draw along here, and I draw straight down from that point. Not doing too bad. All right, so that corner down here is a right angle. You have the rise. The rise is how far up and down it goes. Uh, and then the run is left to right. All right. But I want to look at these two points right here. I'm going to call this point A, and I'll call this point B. It has nothing to do with displacement right now. But point A in my diagram, go back to red, point A in my diagram on my coordinate system has coordinates, it uh, looks like it's about negative 4.0 comma and it's up to about 3 point, uh, maybe it's a little, I'm a little off here, but let's say 3.8, you could go 3.7. All right, no units. And point B is my, let's see, it's about 4.5, positive 4.5 over, and then down about negative 3 point, or negative 2 point, negative 2.1-ish, 2.2-ish. Let's say 2 point, well, 2.1. All right, it could be 2.2. You're estimating a little bit on that last digit there. So, okay, so I'm going to find the slope. So the slope is going to be y sub 2, which is 2.1. I'll take 2.1, my y sub 2, minus y sub 1, which is 3.8, divided by x sub 2, which is the 4.5, because the first number is uh, the x coordinate, uh, b point b, minus a negative 
So that translates to, if I do the math here, 2.1 minus 3.8 is negative what? 1.7? 2.1. Mm -hmm. Oh, I messed up. That should be a negative 2.1. It says uh, point B was uh, 4.5 units over, 2.1 units down. So this is a negative 2.1 right here. Good thing I caught that. You probably saw that. Sorry about that. So it's negative 2.1 minus 3.8, which is negative 5.9. Negative 5.9 divided by, if I ever make a mistake in these notes, just uh, email me or something. Uh, mistakes do happen. 4.5 minus a negative 4.0 is actually 4.5 plus 4.0 is 9.5. No, another mistake. 8.5. Good recovery there, Mr. Rink. Okay. Um, so we have negative 5.9 over 8.5. And therefore, the slope here, if I divide it out, and in physics, we, we want things in decimal. We don't want anything in fractional form, is negative 0 0.69. And no units here for now. We'll come back to units. But that's the slope. It's a negative slope. The slope, the, the line is tilting downward as you go from left to right. So some of you might remember that from algebra class. So in this case, uh, by hand now, we know that the equation of this line, y equals mx. So I'm, pl I'm plugging into this equation up here in the far left, that the y equals mx plus b. Where I'm plugging in for the m, m is negative 0 0.69, negative 0 0.69x plus b. Okay, so we estimated b to be what? 1.0 on where it goes through over here, right there on the x-axis. Uh, I'll highlight it better. Right here, it's about 1.0, so plus 1.0. So if I had to do this by hand, there is the equation of that line. Okay, that's a quick review. Uh, now, curves. Curves technically don't have a slope. They have a changing slope. But you can find the slope at any point on the curve by drawing a tangent line, a line that just barely nicks the, the, the curve. For example here, there's four spots. I'll start with spot B. Uh, the tangent at point B, and I'm going to do the best I can here. All right, so this red line I just drew there is pretty much a tangent at point B. It just nicks that curve at point B. Now that line has a slope, and the slope of that line, okay, would be the slope of the curve only at point B at that instant. So if I did the rise over the run like I did in the previous problem, and that would be a positive slope, and I'll just put uh, a plus slope there. I'm just going to put positive slope. It is a positive slope. Now, if I do it at point A, let me change colors here. Let's go to, eh, let's go to blue. At point A, the tangent would be something like this. Now, let me erase that because I didn't hit that too well. Try it again. It's kind of hard to draw without a ruler. Okay, that's a little bit better. So that's the tangent. That, that case, the slope is about zero. The slope here for that line is roughly zero. It's a flat line. That's the slope of a flat line, horizontal line, is zero. So the blue line has zero slope at point A. It's the tangent at point A. Point B, it's a positive slope. Let me draw another line. Let's get really fancy here. Let's try green. At point C, see what happens here. Oh, not too bad. So that has a positive slope, but it's a bigger slope than the, the red one. So I'm going to put plus plus slope. Only that, that means, actually, let me just do this. I'll make it a bigger plus symbol, sign. So the green line has a bigger positive slope than the red line. Because right now, and in the future problems here, a lot of times you're just comparing the magnitude of the slope. So the green line has a bigger positive slope than the, yeah, uh, yeah, the red line. And we can draw one more. You can see where this is going. Maybe at point D, you're going to have a really steep slope. Let's try, uh, let's go back, well, let's go back to red. Um, so at point D, the line, the tangent line would be something like this. Okay, so that's almost getting vertical now, but it's not completely vertical. That is a huge plus, whoopsie. Uh, it has a huge positive slope, very big positive slope. All right, so the slope's getting steeper and steeper there as this curve curves more upward. So keep that in mind. The slope of a curve, you have to draw tangents at 
each point, and then that slope only is associated with that curve at that point, at that instant in time. If that lower axis is time, like all the graphs we'll have here in a few minutes, we'll all be on the bottom axis will be time. So the slopes of those lines are the slopes at those times. For example, the slope of the green line at point C here is at, if that's seconds, that's at two seconds. And the red line looks at about three seconds. That would be the slope. If you found the slope of that, it'll be a bigger number, like 60 units. And the green line would be like 40. And then, and then the, 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 the lower red one here would be like 20. And the, the, well, the blue one has zero slope. So let's explain that as regards to kinematics terms, displacement, velocity, and time graphs, which you'll be doing a lab on this. Uh, and we're going to analyze a bunch of graphs here in a few minutes. So here are some principles. And there's a lot of principles here, but the, the two main ones are numbers two and three. But I'll go through them uh, more specifically with the, uh, the examples here in a minute. But number one, uh, well, we're going to have three types of graphs. We're going to have displacement versus time graphs, velocity versus time graphs, and acceleration versus time graphs. If we look, well, I have that written down here. So we're going to do three types of graphs. Position, which is going to be akin to displacement. So these are position, velocity, and acceleration graphs. They're all versus time. The horizontal axis will always be time. All right, so we are going to assign directions. And when you're in 1D motion, there's only two directions. There's the positive direction and the negative direction. So we will uh, apply those. So we're going to have a plus direction and a minus direction. And typically to the right is positive, as I say here, uh, down here. To the right is positive, to the left is negative. If we're going east, that's positive. That's usually to the right on a, on a piece of paper. And west is negative. Up or towards the top of a paper is positive. Down is negative. So all these graphs that we're going to be doing and analyzing is going to be talking about an object that's moving in a straight line. It's either moving forward or in the positive direction or in the negative direction. I'll explain that in a minute. But a lot of books, okay, so technically what we're doing is a position versus time uh, or display. Really what it is is and it really, are, these are the same thing. These are the same thing. Position and displacement kind of coincide. Distance is really a different thing, but some of these graphs will be labeled distance graphs. But really, our first graph that we're going to be analyzing are what are called position or displacement graphs. Position tells you where you're at from a given reference point, so you can figure out your displacement on that graph. Uh, once again, loosely speaking, you can call them distance graphs, but they're technically not distance graphs. Really, what they usually are, all the graphs will have are position or displacement graphs. I'll show you examples. But here are the two main things. These two, number two and three, are the two most important things, the slopes of these graphs. OK, so we're going to start. There's three basic concepts that we're connecting. We have your position or your displacement. So it goes from, and this is how I defined it like a couple days ago in the notes when we first did our definitions. We had displacement. This is kind of the hierarchy. It goes from displacement to velocity to acceleration. So those are the incremental levels of difficulty, so to speak. Uh, actually, when it comes to the graphs, uh, it's actually the, the easiest graphs are the acceleration graphs. Those are the ones that are hard to get wrong. Uh, but there's a lot going on here. You'll see a lot of graphs, so it's easy to get confused. So I'm going to make these connections in a few minutes uh, with the examples. But the slope of a position or displacement graph, and once again, it's always versus time, uh, is velocity. So the slope of a position graph is velocity. The slope of a velocity graph is acceleration. So we are going to only be at number four. We're only analyzing things with either zero acceleration or constant acceleration. So the only curved graphs we're going to have are displacement graphs. We're going to have all the, the velocity graphs will all be lines that are horizontal or sloping. Uh, it says that in number six, all our acceleration graphs are either going to be horizontal lines or zero. Uh, number seven and eight, you'll need to worry about. If you want to look at those, you can. We're not going to be doing any of those problems. But let me go back here just a little bit. If I go, if I if I went back here to say this this graph right here, uh, if this were a position versus time graph, okay, this is this the y-axis is the position or displacement. So I'm going to put position here. So if we had position in meters, okay, on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis, because these are the graphs we're doing now, position versus time. And time would be in seconds, typically. You could do it in hours, but we want seconds. So if this would be a typical position versus time graph. Well, not a typical one, but this is an example of one. I'll give you some typical ones here in a few minutes. But in a position, position or displacement versus time graph, they're one and the same as far as our class is concerned. 
we're going to have position or displacement on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis. And if you were to analyze the units here, if we do rise over the run, the rise is on the vertical axis. The units there for rise are meters. And the units for run are seconds. So you might be able to see where I'm going here. If I do rise over the run for this graph, if I just analyze the units, the rise over the run is meters per second. So uh, in this case, basically, that what we're saying here is this negative 0 0.69, if you were to put units on that, is meters per second. In other words, that's the velocity of this particular object. It's negative 0 0.69 meters per second. The negative meaning it's going in the negative direction, whatever our uh, coordinate system is. Usually if you're on like a left, right, that means that this object is moving towards the left because negative means left, positive means it's moving to the right. Or if you're doing east and west, negative is to the west, positive is to the right. So this would be going uh, west. Or if you're going up and down, like towards the sky or towards the ceiling, this object would be moving towards the floor at that rate, 0.69. So that's a quick little proof, so to speak, to show you that there's consistency here with a position versus time graph that connects it to velocity. You could do the same thing for a velocity graph that connects it to acceleration. That the slope of a velocity graph is the acceleration. It explains that a little bit more in detail in the book when you read the, that section. So we have three types of graphs. We're going to have position graphs, position versus time, that is. Displacement, we're equating position with the displacement. Because if you know your position, uh, your final position, your initial position, you can get your displacement by just subtracting those two. They give you the displacement. That's the uh, x final minus x initial gives you displacement, delta x. So we're going to have displacement graphs that will connect to velocity graphs, that will connect to acceleration graphs. So let me explain that with some examples. So down here I have a whole bunch of examples. And I will just kind of outline these. Uh, it's a little fuzzy, but let me connect. These, these three graphs right here are connected. I'm going to call that example A. All right, that's example A. And then um, I'll do different colors here, but I'm going to go, this is example C, and the one between them is example B. So this is C. Actually, let me pause and label all these. Okay, so you're probably going to want to pause this at some point, but you might want to just pay attention for now. So I've grouped all these. So in each column are three graphs that go together. They, co they are consistent with one another. And there's uh, two, three, seven scenarios here, and then I've explained kind of what's going on. Some of these are real obvious, some are not so obvious. Part A is so simple it's hard in a sense. Part A here, you have a position graph, displacement graph, so you have x versus time. So the horizontal axes in all these are time. So you have position versus time, then the second graph here in the middle is velocity versus time, the third graph is acceleration versus time. That's true in all these cases. All these bottom graphs down here are acceleration versus time graphs. All the middle ones are velocity versus time graphs, which are consistent with the displacement versus time graph that's above it. So in position A here, what you have is an object that's just sitting still. It's It's got Say you have like a, a number line where zero is down here in this corner, right? That's where zero is right here. But you got some object that's sitting like four meters from the start line. So there's my start spot right there. All right, that's my zero spot. Sorry about that. All right. Um, fix that. Okay, so there's an object that's just sitting there like five meters or four meters from the start line. Just sitting there. So the velocity graph is zero. It's not moving. And once again, that's consistent with the slope concept. The slope of this horizontal line is zero. So that's the slope. Zero is the velocity. So the velocity is zero. If the velocity is zero and staying zero, there's zero acceleration. B here, all right, represents something starting at the zero mark and just speeding up, just like a car hitting the, the gas pedal. It's not, not, get, not, not flooring it, but you could be flooring it, but just a steady acceleration. So this is a position graph or a displacement graph, and it has one slope. So it might have a slope of six, six meters per second. So this velocity graph is a horizontal line. It's a steady velocity. The velocity is not increasing. This line has one slope. There's one velocity here. Rise over run would give you one slope, one velocity. So this velocity might be like, I think I said, six meters per second. And the slope of this is zero. It's not accelerating. It's just staying at a, uh, a given velocity. Part C here represents something that at time zero back on this axis right here, this vertical axis, at time zero, the thing is already moving, 
and it's like kind of like a car that's rolling along and it sees a light turn red and it slows down steadily. You hit the brake, not, you know, not squealing your tires or screeching to a halt, but you're slowing down to a stop. So right here at the end of this problem where this line intersects the uh, axis here, um, it's, sorry, I, I misspoke myself here. I misspoke myself. So let me start over with this one. This is a, this is a car that's uh, moving with a constant velocity. It's not accelerating. It's it's not hitting the brakes. It's moving with a con this car is moving with a constant velocity, but it's moving in the negative direction. So it's got a constant slope, a constant negative slope, say negative six meters per second. That's why the velocity is constant at negative six or whatever this value is, and it's staying constant. Once again, the velocity graph is horizontal. The slope is zero. So the acceleration is zero. All right, so the only time you're only going to have acceleration is when your displacement graph is curved. So when your displacement graph is curved, and these are all, will all be parabolas or part of parabolas. We're not going to analyze them that closely right now, but that would be a parabola. And um, that which is, gives rise to a constant acceleration. So the acceleration at best will be a horizontal line. We're not going to have any slanting accelerations. They'll all be horizontal lines, either positive or negative. This represents in part D here. And I have it over here at the right as well. A car that's basically at, say, a stop sign or stop light, and you hit the gas pedal and it just speeds up. So the slope is getting steeper and steeper here. That means the velocity is getting higher and higher. So the velocity is increasing steadily. This represents velocity going from zero, increasing as time goes on. And it, uh, one slope there for the velocity gives you one acceleration. So once again, the slope of this line is one number, say, two meters per second squared. So that was what the acceleration would be for this problem. Part E, all right, would represent uh, a, an object that's slowing down to a stop, but it's moving in a negative direction. Okay, this is probably the hardest one on here because E is a positive acceleration. Basically at time zero over here, right where this curve hits the x-axis, where I kind of put my cursor right now, if you found the slope there, it would be a steep negative. Okay, the slope would be a steep negative. That means it's a negative velocity when the problem starts. The car is moving and you're hitting the brakes and coming to a stop because the slope is zero at the end or you can see the velocity graph. The velocity graph hits this spot right here. And one of the challenges we have is we start to mix up these graphs. Uh, but you just got to stay focused here and look at some of the notes I have on the side. This is a car that has a, vol a negative velocity. The negative means, so the velocity is negative. It's below the zero. It only means that the car is traveling in our predetermined negative direction. Say it's west or to the left or down uh, would be our negative direction. And it's slowing down to a stop steadily. There's one slope here, but this slope is positive. That's why the acceleration is positive. It's one positive slope. It's kind of like a double negative. You're slowing down in the negative direction. Think about that for a second. Car E is something that's, or object E is something that's slowing down in the negative direction. It's a double negative. It's like saying, I'm not going to my grandma's house. Well, if I'm not not going to my grandma's house, then I am going to my grandma's house. It's a double negative. We don't like that, but it seems um, uncomfortable. But that's a positive acceleration situation. All right, F, and I have it over here. All right, so that E is, this is all part of E right here. It was a negative velocity slowing down to a stop, the double negative. Uh, you're heading in a negative direction, slowing down. But F, uh, in F, you're starting off if, uh, with a positive velocity. You have a positive slope here, or if you look at the velocity graph, there's at time zero, there's a velocity, and it's slowing down to a stop. So the slope is getting shallower and shallower. At the very end here, there'd be zero slope at the final spot here after whatever time period at the end of this, where this ends, the slope would be zero. This thing is slowing down to a stop. And once again, this is a line. It has one slope. It's a negative slope. It's sloping down like the example we use at the beginning of the page. So it's a negative acceleration. One negative constant acceleration. All your acceleration graphs are going to be horizontal lines. So keep that in mind as we analyze future graphs. And then finally, this one's also a negative acceleration. You can, you're not cheating when you look down here, but you can see it's still a negative acceleration. But why is this last one negative acceleration? Well, what's happening? So I can ask you at time zero, what's happening to this object? Well, at time zero here, the slope, you can look at this graph here, the displacement graph or the velocity graph, the velocity is at zero, and this thing is speeding up in the negative direction. It's getting a faster and faster negative velocity. 
So it's speeding up to the left or speeding up to the west or speeding up in the downward direction because the velocity is at this point is higher, but it's a negative, bigger negative. And so if you drew slopes here, once again, the original slope here would be zero at time zero, and the slope would be getting steeper and steeper if I drew tangent lines until I got to the end of here and have a bigger negative velocity. All right, let's practice this another way down here with these graphs. So um, there's uh, 11 graphs here. So let me summarize these. Let me pause and summarize. Okay, so yeah, once again, you're probably going to want to pause and write some of this down or listen a little bit and then pause and write it down. But I've gotten more detail as time goes on here with my descriptions on the right for each graph. So graph A is the same as graph D at the very top of the page. All right. Uh, it's an object that starts, if you draw a tangent line at the beginning, it has zero velocity and it's increasing in slope. It's kind of like the example way up at the top here that we used. I go way up here. If I can find it. Where is it? Oh. It's this one here. It's this example except for point A is at the zero mark. Uh, so we have zero slope at the beginning, which would be the velocity of zero at the beginning, and the velocity is getting steeper and steeper and greater and greater. So it's a positive acceleration. That's what that graph uh, A is on the bottom here. And it's, akin to, it's equivalent to graph D on the previous page that I just passed. Part B has four different parts. You got to be real careful when you look at these. This is a velocity graph. So it, it tells you the velocity directly. So when the problem starts, this car has a constant negative velocity. So you got to, we're switching gears here. A was a position or displacement graph that shows that there's acceleration because there's a curve. A curve position graph gives you uh, acceleration. This one this is a, a, um, a negative velocity, a steady negative velocity, and the slope of that is the acceleration. So I can infer the accelerations here. In, in part one here, there's no acceleration. Part two, in most books, this will be a vertical line, so it's kind of an instantaneous, non-realistic. Here they show it slightly slanted. It's a quick stop. So you're going from some negative velocity, you're heading in a negative direction, say westward or to the left, and you come to a quick stop. At, at section three there, you're stopped for a while, whatever time period that is. And then as time, section three ends, you're speeding up steadily. It's a constant slope. So um, it's a uh, constant positive acceleration. So I have that over here on the right-hand side, step part four. It's the same as graph B at the top of the page. It's a steady positive acceleration. So if I go to that one, uh, oops, no, I just passed it. Um, so actually, no, it's not B above. It is uh, D. That should be D. All right. So part four should be graph D. I should say D here. Sorry. Erase the B. Come on. Uh, I got it. That should say, yeah, that's a D. All right, so part four there is graph D. It's a positive slope, all right? It's a positive acceleration because the slope of velocity graph is acceleration. All right, uh, part C, once again, is uh, the same as graph C at the very top of the page. It's a it's, the slope of this is zero. There's no acceleration. It's a steady negative velocity some car or object is heading in the negative direction, say going 50 miles per hour towards the west, whatever our negative direction is. Okay, part D, now uh, once again, it's a position graph, so anything curved means it's accelerating. So part one is acceleration. Something is starting with a large negative velocity coming to a stop at this point right here. It's staying stopped in section two. It's staying stopped. And then in section three, it's once again, going in the negative direction, but at a steady speed, a steady negative velocity. So we have a constant negative velocity for part three of that. Part two was staying stopped, and then number one was slowing down to a stop. Uh, so part one there is the same as graph E on the previous page. All right, uh, part E here is the same as graph B at the top. It's an object that has a steady, constant, positive slope, steady, constant, positive velocity, because uh, you can infer the velocity from this graph by looking at the slope. There's a velocity graph, so we're in part F. So you're going to infer all the accelerations of all five segments. So in segment one here, it's a steady negative acceleration. Part two 
is a very large positive acceleration, huge positive, quick coming to a quick stop. For part three here, it's staying stop, the velocity is zero. Part four here is a quick speed up in the negative direction, whatever your negative direction is, because in part five, you're staying at a steady velocity in the negative direction. Constant negative velocity for part F. Okay, part G, it's a position graph. Once again, all the slopes represent velocity. So on the position graphs, displacement graphs, the slopes represent velocity. On the velocity graphs, the slope represents the acceleration. So here we have three different velocities. Step one, positive velocity, constant, steady, positive velocity, something going in a positive direction. Part two, the object is stopped, the slope is zero, the object stopped. And part three, it's got a steady negative velocity. It's going in a negative direction at a steady speed. So those are the three slopes there that refer to the velocities. Here this refers to the acceleration, constant negative acceleration. All right. This particular object was moving in, uh, in the positive direction. Uh, it's moving towards, the, say, the east, whatever a positive direction is, and slowing down to a stop. By the time the problem gets done, at the end here, it's stopped. Uh, it's a constant negative acceleration. Uh, I think that letter H, letter H was like, uh, uh, it's like F. That's like the F that we have above there. So for H, I could have said it's the same as graph F at the top of the page. All right, I is like le uh, letter G at the top of the page. So you're starting with uh, zero velocity. You've got some position in the positive territory, positive displacement when you start. But the slope would be zero at the beginning, and it's getting, if you draw tangents, they get steeper and steeper. So at the end here, you have very steep negative tangents. So you're increasing your speed in the negative direction. Um, so it's a large, uh, well, it's a constant negative acceleration because the speed is going from zero to a large negative. It's like graph G at the top uh, or the previous page. So once again, let me double check that. Yeah, that's a constant negative acceleration. All right, so J is three parts. Once again, all three parts represent velocity. So the first part's a constant positive velocity. Then for two, it's zero velocity. And three, since it's curved, it's showing acceleration. It's, a, it's, a, it's going from zero velocity to a steep. That's like an increasing velocity. At the end here, you have a, positive, a large positive velocity. So it's a constant positive acceleration going from zero velocity to some positive velocity. And then letter K, once again, it's just like graph E on the, on the previous page. You're starting with a large negative slope at times zero. Something is going in the negative direction. It has a large negative velocity when it starts. And as the th slope um, comes to a zero, in other words, at the end here, the slope is decreasing. If we drew, I drew a tangent line at the end, it's kind of the opposite of uh, I. At the end here, it would have a zero velocity. So it's going from a large negative to a zero. This is that famous double negative. It's like graph E. It's uh, slowing down in the negative direction. So it's heading in the negative direction and slowing down. So it's like not, not going to grandma's house. You are going to grandma's house. That's the toughest one. That is a positive acceleration. All right. So hope those are helpful. We're going to practice those some more with the homework and in the lab. A lot to think about. You might need to look at that. And like I say, pause this and write everything down because it's too much to write down as I'm speaking. Uh, we'll need to practice because there's many more graphs that you can put together a piecemeal like some of these are. And, but the, basically, these are all the sub-patterns that we're looking at and all the ones that we just did. So we'll practice that.